I'm Jake Bruton, and today on The Build Show, we're going to talk about why this blower door has two fans in it. Let's do it now. Okay, we are in Virginia Beach, Virginia. We are on a Jackson Andrews Design Build project. It's their modern build. We'll put a link to Jackson Andrews, the company, and Rick Mills, their project manager, and the hashtag for this down in the description. And I'm joined by Sam from Retro Tech. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Uh, and Sam brought this. <laughs> so before we get into this, we'll pretend that it only has one fan in it and we'll recap. First of all, go back and rewatch Blower Door Math or any of the other Blower Door videos on the Build Show Network that I've put up. But the gist of it is the fan pressurizes the building to 50 pascals of pressure and then we measure how much air is leaking out of the envelope and that gets us a air exchanges per hour at 50 pascals uh, reading. So then we can test that or verify that against code. Code for most of the country is 3ACH50. It actually happens that I don't believe they test in this market at all. Like they don't have to do this. They're choosing to do this. They're trusting their methods but verifying so that they can say we're good at this. Now you have two different fans here. If we were running one fan we'd just be running this guy and this is the 5000. Is yep. that correct? and it runs how many CFM? Uh, a little over 6,000. Okay, so this is the device that I own with the door with just one hole in it, and we've never had a problem with 6,000 CFM being enough CFM to pressurize the house. Larger structures, however, that's why we have this. So walk me through what this is, Sam. Yeah, so what we see here, these two fans, they look identical. Uh, like you said, this is the 5,000. Down here is the model 6,000. Uh, and it produces a little more, uh, a little over 8,000 CFM. So as you would imagine for larger buildings, especially when we get into commercial, really large residential like we're in now, sometimes you need more fan power. Uh, so you can run uh, multiple fans together. Uh, it gets a little more complex than running just one blower door fan. Yep. So uh, what we like to do when we do a, a whole building test like this with multiple fans is running what's called a common control test. And that's how we have all the fans linked together in series to run at the same rate at the same time. Um, some of the, com the, well, the most common mistake that I see is people try to do an individual control where you have uh, each fan running independently and what can happen is they can fight each other. So we have, uh, we have these fans, we call it daisy chain together. There's two Cat5 ports, uh, one in from the gauge, and then from that point on, one goes out to the next fan, that way they run in series. And uh, we always like to run this uh, using software. That way we can have a nice report at the end. If we want to do a post test later, uh, we have something to compare it to uh, to see what our previous numbers were. Um, but uh, you can also run a manual test. You can have two manometers and just add those two CFM together. But you know, like with anything, software makes life easier. It does all the math for us. So yeah. uh, it takes a lot of the time out of it. Yeah, so this building, we kind of glazed over it. This building is quite large the interior volume, the, the cubic footage, is somewhere right at 200,000 cubic feet of air that's crawl space this elevation and the one above us. And to pressurize that, if we have enough leakage, 6,000 might not be enough, 8,000 might not even be enough, putting the two together works. Now, we don't ever do the software because our HERS rater is running the software and giving us a report, but when we're testing, we're just testing CFM or ACH 50 and we yeah. can do that on the manometer. The manometer is smart enough on the app. It's smart enough here We're doing both so that we can we can actually Interpret all of that it adds the flow together to get us a CFM and then it calculates the ACH 50 Now it turns out you actually wasted time loading this one up, right? Yeah, we, we didn't need this uh, We have a talented builder here. <laughs> they did a great job uh, Yeah, we this this is overkill actually for such a large house uh, it's tight enough to where one standard uh, standard power fan would have done just fine here. Okay, so that three ACH50 that's code basically nationwide, mostly nation nationwide. You can do an Energy Star home, which would be 2.5 ACH50. With this fan, would still be like I think it was uh, 5,000 CFM mm -hmm. if they were just to meet that 2.5 number, somewhere right there. It's rough, uh, but their final number, and this is a, a huge like. Holy cow, you guys killed it. You knocked it out of the park. You should be really proud to, to Rick and all the crew at, at Jackson Andrews. Uh, their final number was what? 0.67? Yeah, so like 50? that far from being passive house standard, uh, 
0.67. That's, uh, that's really impressive. And I know that there's, a, there's an argument to say like, oh, well, the house is really big, so the volume affects the ACH number less. And so the whole, the problem with that theory is that there's also that many more windows, that many more places to take, that many more penetrations in the envelope that they're dealing with. So I think it's still fantastic and they have every reason to think that they did an amazing job. Yeah, and another way of looking at it is, you know, like Jake said, uh, ACH 50 favors large houses. Uh, it's, it's harder to get that a smaller number down in a smaller house. But another way to look at it is the CFM of leakage per square foot of envelope area. That's, that's how our commercial codes are written. Yep, and, and this house in Europe came out, too. Yeah, and in Europe as well. This house came in at 0 0.06 CFM per square foot. Uh, of envelope area, uh, and to compare that, the Army Corps of Engineers has their standard that's written that way, and theirs is 0.25, so they were well below yeah, that. A third of, yeah. of that. So either way we want to look at it, this was a huge success, uh, and I think it's kind of absolutely hilarious that you trucked this thing all the way here. And you Just in case. <laughs> yeah, <you didn't> <laughs> Wasn't so, close. stay tuned, there's more videos coming from this house. Uh, don't forget to check out RetroTech, they made the uh, blower door that I have. Uh, I'm really happy with it. It's not a commercial for them, but they were nice enough to come and, and help us for, with this. Uh, and we have another video where we're going to talk about all the other things that we did with this that didn't have to do with the number that had to do with finding out what's wrong with the envelope. Exactly. So yeah. thanks for watching.